All right, welcome, guys. This is Randy with Direct Action. Good to see everybody uh, tuning in, and thanks again for all the continued support. Uh, we're into another episode of a Direct Action podcast, which for uh, folks that have been uh, viewing, following, and, and liking and subscribing, we don't do these a lot, not for any other reason than I'm on the road a lot, and time is a precious commodity. That being said, we've got a great guest today. He's a personal friend of mine. I've known him for uh, quite a few years now. His name is Lee Halverson. Lee and I uh, crossed paths together while um, working at the Joint Task Force too. So Lee is going to talk about his um, his experiences, what uh, what brought him to the unit, how he got there, um, where he came from, and we're going to get to know a little bit about Lee. So for folks that may not know, as an ammo uh, ammunition technician, there is a lot that goes into that job, and you know hopefully Lee's going to you know speak about whatever he's comfortable speaking about his time at the unit, but also as the uh, as a, a profession in the ammo technician trade. So Lee, thank you very much for joining us. It's awesome to have you, buddy, and uh, welcome. Thanks, buddy. Super happy to be here. Lee, tell us uh, tell us a little bit to get started. You know, a little bit about you. Where did you Where did you grow up, and how How did your military career kind of take flight? Uh, so born born and raised here in Ottawa. Uh, you know, as an Orleans kid. Um, you know, I, I did most of my life in, in fitness, believe it or not, prior to getting into the military. But uh, uh, I quit my I quit my fitness gig in, uh, what, 2008 uh, to pursue, uh, you know, law enforcement. I really wanted to be a cop badly. And uh, an opportunity came up to go overseas uh, to Afghanistan as a uh, as a civvy um, to work with uh, PSP. So I worked with PSP for a little bit um, over there. Um, so for folks at home that are maybe not aware, what, what is PSP's role in, in the Canadian Armed Forces and, and how did you find yourself in Afghanistan as a PSP member? Right. So, uh, so uh, personal support, you know, basically is uh, I, I worked in the gym. I was, in the, I was a gym attendant, uh, applied for the job because um, I was you know, working in the fitness industry. I knew all the equipment that they had um, in terms of being able to maintain it. Right. Um, so that was kind of my my entry. Um, so I went over there uh, in 09 uh, to Roto 7 um, for, my, I was there for a little over six months. Um, and that's where I met you guys. Uh, and so 2009, you were in Afghanistan and where, where did they have you positioned? So uh, I was in CAF originally, um, but I travel. So, you know, I went everywhere from you know, there was there was uh, Wilson to um, PRT, so you know Nathan Smith. Uh, you know Graceland, obviously, uh, and then I got to go to you know Spinboldak. Uh, I was I was all over uh, Leatherneck, uh, wherever kind of the guys were, um, yeah. or they needed something. I was there for them, whether it was you know running something on the CrossFit pad, uh, fixing a treadmill, yeah. uh, you name it, uh, I did it. Right on. So you spent almost six months bouncing around the country yeah. in the role of PSP. That's it. And while you were there, if you, if you don't mind, you know, share a little bit about your experiences. So what was it like being in Afghanistan at that time? So for folks that may or may not be aware, Canada's involvement in Afghanistan, especially between 2006 and 2009, that's where Canada suffered its most casualties. That's where yeah, it was heavy. It was heavy. The, it was there heavy. was there was a lot going on. There was a lot of uh, improvised explosive device type of deaths yep. um, that Canadians were unfortunately on the receiving end from. So you were there during that hot and heavy uh, time. Yeah, we uh, um, so yeah, uh, I remember one of my first trips out. Uh, I wasn't supposed to travel uh, on the road. So uh, most of the time I had a, a Chinook to myself with like a, a two Apache escort, which was bonkers. It was yeah. just like, this is amazing. <laughs> uh, I found my calling, <laughs> uh, to my first trip out was on a coyote. <laughs> wow. Uh, and we went to, uh, um, excuse my, uh, Massengar. went to yeah, Massengar, yeah. and, uh, yeah, it was hairy, uh, needless to say. Um, it's the first time I heard uh, bullets fire. It sound yeah, I didn't know what it was at first. It was it sounded like a, a you know kind of a branch cracking, whatever. It's kind of how I explained it. Yeah. But um, yeah, the guy's like, oh yeah, we're being shot at. Just you know, it was like, oh, 
Yeah. This is great. Okay. <laughs> whoa, 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 what am I doing here? <laughs> You're supposed to be fixing treadmills. Yeah, 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 now I'm being hilarious. shot at. But I mean, we, we, you know, we made it through. I got to hear the comms. I got to hear everything. Guys dismounted, you know, did, did their thing. It was just like, this is amazing. Wow. Uh, it was pretty, pretty wild in that first kind of 48 hours of me being there. Yeah. Uh, so I got to experience a lot of, of those type situations. Um, and then, uh, yeah, ramps, unfortunately, it was a pretty heavy one between, uh, I was there from, uh, let's see, I was there from probably May to November, December, and it was probably about a little, a little under 40 ramps uh, wow. for, for us, um, which was which was awful. So what, what Lee's referring to is a, is a ramp ceremony. So what he's, what he's referring to is 40 ramp ceremonies, which means the unfortunate reality is good Canadians are are being repatriated to to Canada. So, you know, Lee was, um, you know, witness to a lot of that, which is pretty heavy on its own. Yeah, it was it was awful. Um, you know, Canada Day celebration, you know, you, I, I don't drink, so I, you know, do the right thing and pass my beer on to the guys. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Thank you very much, by the way. You're very I, welcome. I, I was always uh, happy to receive they, those extra Yeah, they pints. loved me. <laughs> uh, and, you know, uh, next minute uh, they're out and then um, they're not. And they didn't come back yeah. and uh just really weird it was kind of my first uh experience with uh loss in, in that retrospect anyway knowing someone for a, a quick amount of time bonding really quick with yeah. somebody and then all of a sudden they're like you know we'll, we'll be back and then they don't come back and mm -hmm. it's like you know you know how it works comms lockdown you know, my first one i'm like what's happening i don't have internet and they're like oh it's comms and then you know you lock down and then you know that means you know they call the nine liner everyone goes to you know roll three and then uh yeah it is what it is um so yeah that was kind of my fire hose learning yeah. of how quickly things can turn ugly out there um so so that's you know, a wave top of your first exposure to Afghanistan as a civilian yeah. PSP member at yeah. that point. So when you came back from Afghanistan, yeah. where were you stationed at the time? Were you here in Ottawa? Yeah, I was here in Ottawa, okay. here in Ottawa. Um, uh, I went back a second time in, in 2011. Um, uh, I uh, was in the system with OPS. Um, I, I got a call that I was going to be uh, hired. Uh, they are hiring 11. And uh, so I got the okay to leave, um, which is a big a big deal, even as a civvy, you yeah. know, to leave. Um, it goes through a lot of hands. And uh, got home only to be told they were going to hire three. So, yeah, I left, you know, friends and people over there to come back and pursue my police career, only to be told, no, uh, sorry, uh, we're only hiring three, and you can reapply next year. That was basically my... So the Ottawa Police Service, they give you no reason. They just say, reapply next year. Reapply. So now you're waiting a, an additional year. At that point, did you revisit? Re I did not. <laughs> so I, I, I did not. Okay. Uh, my wife really knew that I wanted to, per, uh, you know, I kind of fallen in love with, you know, the whole, because um, I had met you guys out there at, at you know, in Graceland and, um, and it was a very big appeal. Yeah. Um, I loved the, you know, the the whole, uh, very, I don't know, I always tell people it was really easy being on tour. Mm -hmm. um, simple, you had to just do your job. I mean, even your clothes came back folded. It was it was just super easy. You go yeah. eat, you train, and then, you know, you, you go do your job. It was it was super easy, and I, I, I love that. Yeah. Um, didn't have to think about anything else. No curveballs out there, it was just do your job. Yeah, I agree with you. I, yeah. Some of my fondest moments were deployments. Like I yeah. loved I loved being deployed. Yeah. And, you know, the, we all knew what the purpose was, what the vision was, yeah. you know, less distractions from all of the other stuff. And um, yeah, I can agree with you. Um, I, that's where I felt most at home to be completely yeah, honest. Yeah, that was the uh, the big uh, appeal for me um, was, was, I mean, obviously the guys, you know, they I mean, they, they didn't know me from a hole in the ground, but accepted me almost in instantaneously and I think it was something that I had looked for for uh, quite some time um, so it was kind of uh, validation like it was like okay I'm I'm doing something um, so you had exposure to cats off comm so yeah. members of JTF2 Seesaw yeah. uh, would be at FOB uh, Ford operating base Graceland at that time uh -huh. so during that experience there was something positive something lit inside of you and then if you don't mind just you know share with our viewers what what drove you to, you know, become an ammo technician? How did that happen? How did that unfold? And then right. eventually your road to uh, to land a job with Joint Task Force Two. 
Right. So they say, uh, you know, where one door closes, i.e. OPS, uh, another one uh, opens. Uh, I had no uh, idea, um, you know, that that particular door would open, um, but did my basic. I mean, I left, uh, you know, 2000, whatever it was, 12. So how old were you at that time? You did basic uh, I training? 36. 36 you did yeah, basic got, training. Yeah, I got in pretty late. Um, uh, left for that. I met, met some great people there. Um, uh, got, you know, you, you get stationed back to, to, to Borden, go do my, my threes, yeah. um, do my threes there. And then, uh, I, uh, you know, I got approached by a couple of people saying that, Hey, they're looking to do kind of a pilot they're looking to bring in two threes. Um, so kind of, you know, no bad habits, no, yeah. no nothing, just kind of, you know, FNGs for say yeah. uh, to, to 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 come out and and do the thing. So that was that was Jeff and I. We got uh, uber lucky. Um, we were selected. Um, there were some people that were really happy to have us on board, and there were some people that you know were against us. And so that so that so just for viewers, what what Lee's referring to is when he talks about threes. That's trade training. So he's receiving the the training that's required to be an ammo technician. And then correct me if I'm wrong, right from your your threes qualification, you went to JTF2. I got my posting for a joint task force too. Amazing. Yeah. Um, so uh, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, um, our MWO at the time, you know, they come around at the end in the range, you know, oh, where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? And I'm like, well, you know, Dwyer Hill. And he's like, oh, <laughs> Dwyer Hill. He's like, uh, they're going to teach you everything wrong, and then you come back to me, and I'm going to teach you everything right again. Wow. And I was like, wow. A little bit of jealousy there. Yeah. <laughs> but I was, but honestly, uh, Randy, when I, and, and, and this was my, my warrant officer at the time, his name was, his name was Matt Hall. He was a great guy. Right. And uh, he's standing behind this particular MWO, and it was an honest question when I asked him, oh, you've been there before. Right. And Matt Hall just, you know, smirk, one of these, smirk, and smirk, he's smirk, like, no. And I was like, oh. Uh, <laughs> and he's yeah. like, are, are you making fun of me? And I was like, no. Like, it was a, it was a valid question. Right, right. And uh, I was like, oh, okay, so you, you don't know what it's even like to be there, right. sir, whatever. Uh, you know what? I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. For, you know, the, the senior enlisted that are out there, and, you know, we'll say senior warrants, mm -hmm. you know, master warrant officers who have the opportunity to influence a positive change and mentor you know a, a brand a brand new soldier just getting into it hungry um motivated for the individual to miss an opportunity right to lift somebody correct encourage somebody rather instead you know casting shade on yep. on an experience that he's never zero. he's never lived zero it's uh -huh. unfortunate so folks out there that when you're in those positions remember the words that you say and what you what you choose to say has has meaning you'll be careful with with the words that you're choosing to to share amongst a young influential soldier who only wants to do good things you know it's all i wanted uh absolutely uh there's a, a few incidents uh with him being a guy off the street clearly i you know i didn't know you know cats asked about ammo and explosives but sure. i but i can learn i'm i'm smart yeah um told me that you know more than likely i would i would fail the six month course i'd have a hard time catching up a lot of these guys are um you know they've they've either been you know in the military they've it's they've, they've changed trades so they know the deal and i was like okay you know we'll sure. we'll see what happens right and uh you know not to toot my own horn but top both you know the you know <laughs> the academic side of things and in the field portion right on so and then to, to add that you know oh yeah and i'm going to dhc by the way right yeah, yeah you have yourself a great day and <laughs> yeah. uh you know being a 36 year old guy at the time i might have been able to to absorb that blow but, but like you said uh you know maybe a you know 21 year old 22 year old getting smashed on by you know his, his mwo who's at our, you know you see him and he's like he, you know he's 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 dad at the time he's yeah, he's, right. he's the guy yeah you know he's been there um yeah. to, to say something like that it just kind of put a little bit of a fire on, under me more than anything um to to prove him not necessarily prove him wrong but prove me right yeah um, that i can do it so. well it just goes to show the the level and the you know the type of character that you are because you know like you said a little bit more mature um you know have some life experience yeah. that you can you know draw upon yeah. 
that young 21, 22 year old, maybe not, you know, and maybe, so maybe that has a different effect on him. It yeah. probably change his or her trajectory, you know, like, yeah. oh, maybe I'm not, maybe they start to question themselves right off the bat. But you know, I, I didn't, I was like, no, I'm determined. I was just determined to, to do well. Yeah. And then to, to get that opportunity, obviously to be able to stay home, you know, in Ottawa, you know, not move my kids and, you know, my wife uh, who had a, a, you know, my wife makes the money in, in, in my family, so uh, no way she was moving right. um, type thing. So, um, you know, I really wanted to go to Quebec City. I wanted to be a, you know, work with the Van Dues because yeah, I, cool. I had worked with them in 09 and I had a riot with them. Yeah. And uh, so that was the spot. Jen's family was there. But You're fluently bilingual? Yep. Very yep, good. yep, fluently bilingual. And uh, yeah, so, um, you know, one door closed, another one opened, and then uh, I got to the unit in August of what, 2014. Right on. And uh, so before, before we talk about the transition to the unit, mm -hmm. um, if you don't mind, just maybe educate folks on what is an ammo tech? What does an ammo tech do? And what are your like primary roles day to day? Yeah, so, um, you know, ammo is basically, we, we go through the complete life cycle of ammunition from, you know, say, i.e., you know, receiving it, inspecting it to make sure that, you know, ideally the equipment that, you know, the guys get at the end of the day um, functions properly um, or is in at least the best, you know, possible, you know, state in order for there to be no mistakes. Right. Um, uh, then you guys will, you know, fire it. Usually we're on the, you know, the range with you, whether you're firing small arms or you're going, well, we were all small arms because yeah. uh, we were light infantry. But, um, you know, from rockets, you know, just make sure they're not dented. Uh, yeah. There's no mud, uh, you know, expiry, mm -hmm. uh, all that type stuff. So moving it, disposing it, ordering it, um, shipping it is yeah. probably the biggest part of our job is, is right? shipments, logistics, getting stuff quickly to where it's supposed to go. So you know, the painters can do their job. Right, right. Uh, right. So I always consider myself a roadie in the band. I always, <laughs> I use roadie in the band. Yeah. <laughs> and I just made sure you guys had your kit to do what it was you had to do. And it was a, it was a, it was a big thing for me. So. Very cool. And as an ammo tech, it's not just ammunition. Like you alluded no. to, you're talking about rockets, you know, <laughs> grenades, yep. um, explosives, explosives yep. a, a, anything that is in you know, the dangerous. Your, yeah, um, absolutely. So from your, you know, your, your, you know, your flashbangs to uh, matches, you know, to light your time fuse, like to, you know, and then right to, you know, you know, claymores to, you know, grenade, you name it. Wow. Um, we, we, we take care of those, make sure they function properly. And if they don't, we dispose of them accordingly via logistic disposal right. or in situ when we're in overseas. Um, we do have some EOD or explosive ordnance uh, capabilities. Uh, there are some guys in the trade that are one of ones, you right. know, for dealing with, um, you know, chemical. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's one or two maybe in Canada that have and I worked with one of them. Um, so I learned a lot from from him, we'll call him, we'll call him Rob. Sure. And uh, Rob was uh, a big mentor of mine and, and Jake. Jake, we'll give him props because they believed in Jeff and I when they brought us in. And yeah. uh, I think we did, uh, I mean, I ended up staying almost 10 years. I think I, yeah. I, I did my job. You earned a key. <laughs> yeah, I did my job. And I think if, you know, things didn't go the way they did with my health that uh, it, it, I probably would have, I would have said that the rest of my life. I, yeah. I loved being there. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a very important job, obviously. Yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of complexities there. A sure. lot. Um, knowing the equipment, you know, packaging it properly. So we're, we work a lot with uh, TAMS, um, yeah. so tactical air movements. Um, and then we work a lot with uh, transport, borders, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Getting stuff where it is, it's got to go. Yeah, going across the border for folks that maybe are unaware, it's not as simple as, you know, no. sending a, a water bottle across Absolutely the border, not. right? So dangerous cargo, dangerous goods. There's a lot of checks and balances that need to be insured. That yeah, it's a big deal. Wire tight. It's yeah. a big deal. And, you know, not not to and anyone's fault. Some people don't know the, you know, the intricacies of it. Or, you know, you guys are, say, for example, um, I'll just give an example of when we're in, you know, Cali or we're at 29 Palms. Sure. When they'll, they'll kind of travel, you know, across the state line to do something, that state line is is a border. Right. <laughs> so you got to make sure that when you're traveling or you guys are traveling, that I make sure you guys are, are safe and legal. Yeah. So that's a big part of our, our job, too. It's not your fault if you're, you know, not crossing with the paperwork. That's my fault. Right. Uh, and that's why you're this me. Right, right. <laughs> so to make sure you guys are safe or if you guys ask me, why do I have to? I have to know that question or 
lead you to the right direction or write paperwork or I'll show you how to do it. Right. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of paper, <laughs> a lot of paper. Yeah, but important stuff. Okay, so let's fast forward. So now you're you've got the trade. Um, yeah. You're you're active. You're landed in at Dwyer Hill. So yeah. you're doing the ammo trade around 2014. Is that what you said? Around 2014. So being okay. a private. <laughs> Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Uh, cause I, yeah, being a private, I wasn't allowed to deploy. I wasn't a corporal, right? So okay. there was there was that issue with you know, okay, well we're gonna bring in a three, two right. of them, <laughs> but they're not gonna be able to deploy. So um, we did a lot of the housekeeping. Okay. We learned the back end first, which was amazing. Um, so a lot of the you know papers, salvage. Uh, you know, making sure, you know, inspections is, is huge. Right. Um, so I will give us a shout out. Um, a lot of people think that at the unit we are, I've heard many times, um, cowboys. Mm -hmm. I hear that a lot. I hear, uh, you know, don't really follow the rules. Right. Well, I will call BS on you and tell you that we follow them to the almost outmost. Right. Um, we are the number one rated unit in the CAF for our yeah. lockups. Um, at one point when we got there, it was relatively uh, a mess. And, and I think everyone I worked with would agree with that. And we, turn, we turned that around right. um, and became, you know, the, you know, the proverbial crown jewel of, of ammo. The and standard. that's because that was, a will, that was a willingness in, you know, from our bosses, yeah. he decided, you know, yep, we're gonna do it the right way. Uh, we'll shut down. We'll we'll bunker in and we'll do it the proper way. Yep. Fix everything and then get it back to you know balance. And mm -hmm. that was a lot of work. I but, bet. But we did it. And, and, and how long roughly did that take? From to the point where recognized there was an issue that needed to be resolved yep. to the point where okay, this is the standard and this will be the way of the future. How long roughly? Mm, probably a solid three four months of like uh, we we like nose to the grind we yeah. we brought in a lot of the um uh, supply techs um you know to get uh, the paper right so that way when someone came in and they wanted to know exactly where it was we had the paper it was like here it was it was expended etc like right. it was just it was so it was, a, it was a it was a finely old machine by the time we were done with it it took its toll on a, a lot of us we were there 12 16 hours a day wow um, doing paper numbers, you know, you're, yeah. you, you just, but we, we did it and, and kudos to, you know, our boss for not pushing the easy button. Um, cause sometimes there is an easy button operations. It's a little bit easier than at home. We don't yeah. really have an excuse. There's yeah. no excuse. Like That's just, right. just, let's just do it right. The proper way. Yeah. Correct. And he did. So kudos and, to him. And I think it's awesome that you, you speak so freely about it where, you know, there is a misunderstanding yeah. of the unit where the, the unit sometimes gets viewed as cowboys. They do what they want. They have no rules. It's not true. Uh, yeah, it's simply not true. Farthest from the truth. Yeah, farthest from the truth. Yeah, farthest. And, and I would say uh, what's worthwhile mentioning is the, the culture at the organization is do it right. Mm -hmm. do, do it to the standard that we deem to be the, the platinum standard. Right. And, you know, Humans are humans are going to make mistakes from time to time, sure. but it's not the norm. It's not no. like when, when patterns of behavior become just that a pattern, it gets addressed at the end. It gets addressed very quickly, swiftly and gets right. They, you know, right that, that wrong, so to speak. Right. So for folks out there that think uh, JTF2, they, you know, they, they operate under their, their own rules. It's not, it's not the case. So I'm glad uh, you brought no. that up. Nope, not at all. Um, yeah. There are a lot of, I mean, just sometimes like going on a, say for example, uh, we'll go on a range. Sometimes we'll go give some advice, you know, on, on ranges, uh, you know, threes or fives, uh, the, you know, corporals are doing some, some charges or whatever the case may be, but, you know, medics are on scene, obviously, in case something goes wrong, but we've been asked, you know, so do you guys really get a black credit card, you know, to go buy what you want? It's like, nope, <laughs> and still haven't been issued it. <laughs> so absolutely not. Like we have... Some nice kit sure of course but like we're out in the elements almost all the time so i mean it's it's kind of justified to you know have comfortable stuff you know when we're out in the heat or we're out in the cold and 100%. Then, uh, i i think the guys uh, you know should have it yeah. um but uh yeah nothing like that we you know no there is no you know unlimited budget uh, yeah. however you want to look at it no yeah. we work very much in the lines yeah we have a little bit bigger budget um yeah. for 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 reason. right reasons yep Correct. Um, other than that, no, it's not at all 
they have misconceptions. So if you don't mind, talk a little bit about your experience at the unit. So you're at the unit for a decade. Yeah. Um, and during that time, um, multiple deployments, multiple different, um, you know, exercises that you were, you know, heavily involved with. Um, you know, feel free to, to share anything that you, you'd be comfortable talking about during your time at the at the unit. And, and I, I'll caveat this with for viewers or listeners out there that maybe are interested in taking a similar path. You know, you can speak about some of the good stuff and then some of the realities of, sure. you know, what, what you dealt with. Um. I would say if you're, you know, if you're considering it or, you know, it is something that, you know, you really want to do. I, I mean, I'll admit I didn't really have an idea of how I was going to react once I got there. I had this con I had this preconception as sure. well as, you know, what the unit was going to be like. And then I got there and was like, OK, like these guys are just like me, like they're yeah, they do something really, really well. However, they still need my help. Yeah. So there's still a, you know. There's still a sense of validation. I'll, I'll use that a lot because it, it, it was something that I became quite uh, addicted to. Yeah. Was uh, was was the guys? You know, like Metallica asked you to go on tour. Hell yeah, I want to go with you guys. Of, of course I do. If you're yeah. asking, yeah, definitely I want to go. But that comes at a, a cost of of time and where you can devote your time. So. Mm -hmm. You know, I was away a lot. Um, I deployed a couple of times. I wasn't a, a crazy uh, deployment guy. I did, I did one or two, I believe. Um, but I was on X um, all the time. Yeah. And whether I was going to, you know, Cali a lot, you know, uh, Central US, you know, Europe, all over, all over the place. I was yeah. always out the door. Um, sometimes it was, you know, hey, we're leaving tomorrow uh, and we'll be back. I'm not sure when. So just let, you know, Jen know that you'll be back when you're back. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it does take a, a commitment. Christmas is, you know, a lot of firsts we, we, we miss. Um, I miss a lot of baseball games with my son. I miss the first home runs. I missed a lot, a lot of stuff. And I think that's all of us, yeah. um, you know, but I'm catching up now. So yeah, w w whatever, you yeah. know, I mean, it, it is, they knew that I was out doing my thing and something that I really like to do. And I was, you have to be committed to it. You can't kind of, half-ass it you can't yeah. really half-ass anything for that matter especially yeah. where not necessarily especially where we were but especially where we were yeah. um i had a, a big investment in the guys you get to know them obviously and uh i took that very personal um you know so and they took me in so and i think i was searching for that and found it yeah. um and uh i instantly fell in love with that and <laughs> yeah here we are so you, so you fell in love with the culture of you know striving for excellence you you, yeah. you know you, you were surrounded by guys that are are doers motivated um you know high tempo high tempo both training and, and operational like you just mentioned yep. when you weren't deployed on an operational in an operational context there's always the next thing which sure. is which is preparation yeah um just just like uh you know just with you know the courses that we run you know in-house right i mean those you know one one's like a yearly <laughs> yeah. and then we move to two a year um and we're we're supposed to be a shop of about i'd say 12 to 13 and we were operating six right. so <laughs> if one was away now we're down to five one was you know technically you know here doing their thing that's now we're down to four to do all the maintenance right inspections yeah. all the paperwork uh you know going to get kit for the guys you know picking it up salvage etc etc yeah. so yeah you're constantly working sometimes you had to work into saturday and sunday it just yeah. is what high, it is high tempos for sure oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah sometimes they just overlap each other we didn't have time to do that we have to do it when we come back around so yeah but we have to do it so you stay late yeah. <laughs> you do your thing uh yeah. it, it it just it, it is what it is and you gotta like it yeah. you know yeah there were some times where i was like Fuck, man like, i just like to go home <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. i don't want to count bullets right now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> at all <laughs> yeah but you know i mean yeah you've heard you've heard it embrace the the i mean we're we're here it's sunny out we're in full flops yeah. you know i mean we got a monster and yeah. listen to music and it could be worse could be a lot worse. Could be a lot worse. Could yeah. be a lot worse, and a, like a lot worse. We could be on a green side. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, like yeah. we're pretty lucky to be where we're at. And I think there's some people that don't come in there uh, thinking that, and they they should. Their thinking is an eight to four, and it's it's not. Yeah. Sometimes it is. Yeah. 
most of the time it is it is not and that's good advice for folks that might be thinking about it um you know the, the analogy that you touched on earlier you know one foot in kind of one foot out you got to be all in for sure um devoted and and, and committed yeah but uh, like anything in life we, if we if we really want to achieve something that's great right you either want to be a part of it or you don't yeah, you know like this isn't a place where you're like i'm gonna try it yeah. you know no yeah. No, because we go to the school sometimes, you know, and talk to you know the the ATOs, the uh, the officers. Yeah. And uh, I just I always remember one guy. He's like, so like you know, I'd like to try, but what if I get there, I don't like it, and then I want to leave. I'm like, well then don't bother. Yeah. Like just don't. We don't want you. Yeah. Type thing. I, was, I, I would say another way to look at it is, if somebody's contemplating it and they're like, well, I don't I don't know if you know it's it's right for me or my family. Have that conversation with your family. And then, you know, it, nothing is forever. So no. if you commit to, let's just say three years. So that's fair, right? That, yeah. That's fair. That's yeah. more than fair. Yeah. See it out for the three years. Cause that's what you committed to have the conversation with your family prior to, to ensure that there's not going to be any friction points. That's it. And then once you commit, if after a year or two, you realize that maybe this isn't for you, then in that next year of a, of a three year term, for example, yeah. Find the thing that you enjoy and then own it. Tear the ass out of it and, and let that be the thing that you find the most enjoyable because at the end of the three years, then you can move laterally. You can go back to where you came from or do something completely different. And you can, you know, inside, you can tell yourself that, you know, I gave it everything I had. Yeah. Um, one of the things going in, I remember talking with, with, with Jen, um, my wife. Um, it was like, if ever there's a moment in time where you're starting to have doubts, you know, whereas maybe this is a little bit too much, even on her side, and nothing to do with me, tell me, and I'm not losing that. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I wanted that between her, like, look, I'm going to give everything I got here, and she backed me, Yeah. you know, and uh, we'll try the first four, because my first w was four, and then, uh, you know, did, did really, really well, and, you know, kind of found my, my groove, and uh, Jen knew I kind of found my spot, so she supported me until yeah. it was time not to support me anymore. I was like, that's enough. Mm -hmm. like it, it started to take over, um, you know, be because of me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she was like, "That you need to you need to take a break. <laughs> so that's, that's what we did. That's what you did. And, and you know, I... I agree, um, and it's it's great to hear that you know your wife Jen was supportive. My my wife was very similar to when I was at the unit. You know, I was away a lot, yeah. and and when I was home, I was at the gym training a right. lot. So I was fighting mm -hmm. and operating, and mm -hmm. I wasn't home a lot. And it was selfish looking back, but my wife, being this you know supportive gem that she is, she kept saying stuff like, "I know it's not forever." You know, she's like, "I know you're not going to fight forever. I know you're not going to operate." forever so do it while you can do it while you're still enjoying it yeah. and then it was kind of like when it's done then we'll you know we'll, we'll flip the page together um so that's what worked out well for us not every situation is like that no um, but I, I i i like that i mean comms are everything right so jen knows everything um you know she 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 went through all everything with me um she fought them twice as hard as me sometimes because she'd have to pick me up um but you know, I think it's uber important um, that that portion, uh, whether you're at the unit, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're doing, your job is just is just comms, like talk, uh, yeah. you know, have a plan. It's like her supporting me just didn't make me, I didn't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. It was just like, go do your thing. And that's kind of gave me the, the, you know, that free will to, to go out and just give the guys the best I could. And that's, to me, I, 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 I did that. And, there might be some that disagree, and and that's fine. But I can tell you, I, I literally gave the guys everything because they deserved it. Yeah. Um, and there's certain that deserved it even more. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah. so how many years, you know, doing your job at the unit with such a high tempo? How many years do you figure went by before you started noticing that it was having a negative effect or Jen maybe uh, started to highlight certain things that it was starting to have a negative effect and, and to kind of bridge the gap of understanding uh -huh. what was it like you, you alluded to it earlier about part of it was on, on yourself. So oh, yeah. what was it that kind of guided you towards that? 
maybe operational burnout, tempo burnout, or what was it, if you remember, if you recall, what was starting to happen that either Jen recognized or you recognized about yourself? Uh, I'd say it was probably like when, when COVID started to roll around. Um, you know, I remember going in on a Friday and then she being told to go home, right? It was like, oh, okay, what are we doing here? And it's like, well, call you when to come back. And I was like, when are we coming back? They're like, I, I don't know. So, but we still operated at a crazy tempo. Mm -hmm. um, we did not stop. Mm -hmm. um, so I was constantly on the road again. And then, uh, you know, I'd get back and then it was like, okay, well, you're going on course. And I was like, I really need a break. Like, I need a break, mm -hmm. you know, and the docs are like, okay, well, we'll take a look at you. Now you're good, you know, so we're going to send you, you're like, okay, you know, so you go do your thing because I don't know if anyone else that would agree with me Well, you, I wouldn't say sometimes I do not want to wear my beige beret, yeah. but there are some times on course you stand out yeah. and then everybody expects, well, that's the guy or yeah. that's the girl. Yep. They're going to, they know everything. And it's like, I do not know everything. Yeah. And I've never come here to claim I know everything, but there is that pressure right. granted I put that on myself because I was pr pretty proud to be where I was and what, what I had accomplished um, that holds a pressure on its own yeah. um, and then it just compounded um, you know where yeah things just started to happen I wasn't uh, you know happy like I always was uh, just tired yeah. uh, that type stuff. Uh, not as excited to go places that are really nice places to go. Yeah. Um, you know, good goes, as we, you know, we call them, uh, you know, a couple hours of work and then you got six days to yourself, you know, to do whatever it is you want to do. And it was yeah. like, <sighs> yeah, I just want to go to the cottage yeah, yeah. You know, or, wh or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think that was fair to, you know, my shop, number one. But I mean, the unit as a whole, I always, uh, anywhere I went, I carried myself you know, with the unit in mind. So I started to notice it that I was, I never lacked on my job mm -hmm. uh, ever, uh, but I was starting to get really tired. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I got pretty, pretty burnt. Um, I got burnt. <laughs> okay. So you're, you're starting to hit that, that wall, that, yeah. that burnout wall. And, you know, you can talk about as much as you want, Lee, or, or, or not. Um, when, when did you leave the unit and what was the catalyst for you to leave? Um, I left in, well, it's been, it'll be three years, January, uh, c coming. So it would have been 2022. Uh, I went, I went down and, uh, you know, the medical staff to this day, um, including some of the older chain of command that are no longer there anymore, still, uh, take care of me. So that's the type of place you're going to. Yeah. Uh, if you do get the privilege to go, and it's also the type of you're you're not a soldier anymore. You're you, like your family when you're there. Um, I would say even you know you, you're more than family. Um, I was always welcome back if ever I wanted to go back, but I, I can't anymore. And then my wife basically said either you know you 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 tell them or or I will because mm. um, she was starting to see the change. And then. Yeah. You know, I, I did it, you know, put, put my knee down and just said, like, I'm tired and I need a break. Yeah. Um, and that sucked, uh, obviously, because it was a big part of me. But uh, it was for the better. Yeah. You know, I, I needed to take care of myself. Um, and what was really cool is that the guys, <laughs> you know, were like, about time. You know, I was like, what do you... They're like, we were waiting for you to say no for years. Yeah, like, you, yeah. you didn't always have to come with us. Yeah. And I was like, well, I, want, I wanted to go with you. And they were all happy for me, which was pretty uh, amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, it was, I just, I needed to take a, a step back. I think anybody has a, a limit eventually. Yeah. Uh, I may have taken it to a little bit, I took it really personal, um, the guys and their safety and just being around them. Um, so I just overwhelmed me eventually and, you know, uh, water will erode a rock eventually. Yeah. Not that I was a crazy rock, I'm a pretty tiny rock, mm -hmm. however. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was um, 10 years as a cat for me anyway. Yeah. Um, some guys have been there forever. Oh, yeah. And it's like, my goodness, God bless you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, God yeah. bless you. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so yeah. tail end of COVID, you're starting to feel it. Your, yeah. your wife is recognizing some changes. Yeah. Um, tempo was not relenting. Um, no, it was doubling. It was, 
t- two SOACs, you know, two sniper courses, yeah. two. It was like, yeah, okay, uh, no problem, right. you know. But we'd make it happen because that's just who we are. Um, and looking back now that you've had some time to reflect, um, mm-hmm. you know, and you're you're still in the in the healing process. You're still part of the transition center currently. Yep. Uh, which we'll talk about in a second. But looking back at that time now. Is there anything that you would do differently knowing that there's certain things that we can control and there's certain things that we cannot with the things that we can control? Yeah. Is there anything that you would have done differently? And, and if so, at what point was there a specific incident or, or even if you can reflect on that thing? Um, oh yeah, no, that's no problem. Uh, I don't think I would change anything cause it's just kind of, uh, who I am. Um, However, I think, you know, as I passed on some of the stuff to, um, you know, my subordinates when they came in, like, you know, Alex and Adam, I think what you want to do is, you know, when you're a dad, you know, or dad in the shop, you know, the dinosaur, whatever they wanted to call me, (laughs) (laughs) uh, you want them to be better than you. And I would say that they were, they're much better than me. And I think that's the way it's supposed to go. So in that retrospect, I think I, 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 you know, I did my thing. Uh, you know, pop smoke, yep. see you later, I'm out, and, you yep. know, got the t-shirt. Uh, and I, I loved every minute of it and, and wouldn't trade it in for the world. And I don't think I would do anything differently. But if there was, I think would personally inside to tell my insides, you know, it would, would be that it's okay to say no once in a while. Right. You know, and I don't want anyone to think that you're not allowed to say no, yeah. you know. I, I agree. Because you are. Yeah. And, and the guys were like, like I said, they were like, Ugh. Finally, you yeah. go, you're going to the cottage. Yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. And they're yeah. like, good. Yeah. Like, see you in a week, yeah. you know, or whatever. Yeah. Go do you. Go be with the kids, you know, because they, they got to know my family and kids. And yeah, it was a big, like, a big relief, you know, and some of the, you know, the, the great guys of that, you know, yeah. And they tell you it's okay, you yeah. know. And so I would say, if anything, it's okay to say no. There's nothing wrong with that um, to take a little bit of time for you. Um, Because you do need to decompress because it's a lot. Um, It's true. It's important. It's It's okay to say no once in a while and no, just not right now. You know, maybe a couple months from now. Yeah. Because without that decompression, without that proper rest, we we don't really, we don't really function as optimally as we could. No, it's impossible. We think we can, you know, we think we can multitask, but the reality is, man, that, that will wear on you. That will break you down. And if we don't recognize it earlier and take the, take the reins control of our own destiny, then we end up being more of a liability than an asset. There and that's, and that's more of a problem. That's a huge problem. Yeah. And I didn't want to be that. Um, and you know, luckily, you know, Jen recognized it. I rec- I recognized it, you know, and vocalized it. That was the hard part to say like, Hey, like, I don't think I should go on course. Man. <laughs> like yeah. I'm pretty, I'm pretty beat, you know, type thing. But you know, to what you said, like we we're, we're so in tune to taking care of, you know, say how we shoot, how straight I shoot, how fast I shoot, you know, um, or how good I do my paperwork, um, take care of my body. I'm in the gym like three, four times a day, three, four times a week, yeah. banging out, whatever. Um, I eat clean, but no one takes care of their brain. Yeah. The brain is a big one. Uh, I'm, I've learned over the, the, I mean, I had to be taught, you know, to, yep to take care of your brain and uh whether you know you know you're you're a fire breather at the you know at the, the top of the spear or you're you know a supporter like me at the back of the spear um you, you need a break once in a while you, you really do just to not do anything or do whatever it is you want to do um, and there's nothing wrong with saying hey man i need a break it's do, okay <laughs> do you think it would be fair to suggest or recommend Folks that are, are operating at the unit in any capacity, mm-hmm. supporter, specialist, assaulter, it doesn't matter, that they have something that they do that they really enjoy that has absolutely nothing to, nothing to do with military or the uniform. Do you think that would be a healthy, positive way to take care of the brain? In other words, when you leave work, leave work at work. It'll be there tomorrow. And then you focus on whether it's playing baseball or you have another hobby or whatever. Right. Yeah, I can speak to that on, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know what it's like to be, um, you know, an assaulter. I don't I don't know what that's like. I don't know what pressures that comes with because I've never been on, you know, that side of the, the map. What I can tell you is that, um, you know, being on the supporter side of the house, um, 
yeah, finding something outside of work, even with your colleagues, you know, um, or finding friends outside of of, of that. Because uh, a lot of times when you come together, you talk about shit. Right. It just it is it is the way it is. But yeah. Like when you got, I got together for the first time at uh, at DA down down down. Yeah, we didn't really talk about it. Yeah, and I love that. Yeah, you know, it's like yeah yeah, yeah I know. But yeah. how, how's your kids? Yeah, uh, how's your family? There's so many other things to talk about. There's yeah. So many other things <laughs> yeah. to talk about that are just more pertinent yeah. or relevant to the situation. You and, know, and uh, at that point, I hadn't seen you. And it's been a while. It's it, been a while. It was years, right? I, we could have talked about. Of course, we could have talked about sure. the unit, and we could have talked shop because that was our connection. That's right. But literally, we hung out there on the gym floor for an hour and a half, and we talked about everything. I think other than the other unit. than <laughs> like not not a. And, and there are some people that hold on to that, and that and that's okay. But I think you know. They should know that it's okay not to talk about that either, you yeah. know. And it's not that it's not okay to talk about it. It's no, definitely no. okay to talk about oh, it. Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. But sometimes, like, uh, let's talk about a movie, a game, yeah. uh, you know, something you like to do. Uh, I took up uh, officiating. I wanted to referee basketball yeah. forever, and obviously did not have the time. Um, so now I'm on that endeavor. Um, How's that going? pretty good because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are who we are <laughs> uh, so it's supposed to be two three times a week it, it is not that right now no <laughs> <laughs> no it is beyond that but you know i love being on the floor yeah. uh, it gets me out of the house yeah. um and for some reason whatever reason um I'm, my brain is quiet for an hour and 10 minutes while Amazing. i'm out while i'm out there and you know, whether you're you know, John are talking with the kids on, you know, the crowd, the guys, the coaches, whatever the case may be. You kind of have to be in tune. Mm -hmm. You have to be because um, it's important. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so what age, what age group of basketball? Yeah, are you? I go everywhere from like U10 to, uh, you know, 25 year old crybabies. Come just, on. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Next year, oh, yeah, it's yeah. fine. It's a riot. So amazing. I, 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 I absolutely love it. Um, it's become kind of a, a hobby yeah. um, slash I just really like doing it. Good for you. Meet some new people, going to Montreal, Toronto, you meet new camps, you go yeah. to camps, you learn, you just you learn, you learn, network, and yeah. then, uh, you know, Very take cool. on something outside of what it is you used to do. Very um, different. They don't talk to me about it because yeah, yeah. they don't know, and it's yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> it's like basketball. What did you used to do? I was in the Army and retired. I was a logistician. <laughs> it was boring. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And they're all, they move. It's great. Yeah. You know, oh, so some of them that are close to me know, um, you know, because I play baseball with them. Yeah. Uh, and they kind of know what we do. They kind of don't know what we do. They kind of group us all into one. Sure. And I'm like, no, oh, no, I don't do that. Yeah. I'm, I'm a roadie. <laughs> who supports <laughs> Metallica? That's that's what I do. Yeah, but uh, yeah, um, find a hobby, uh, yeah. you know, or just something you like to do. Music, write, uh, pictures. I I like pictures. I write a lot. Yeah, music is everything. Um, yeah, I'm a huge fan of journaling. I started. Yeah, I started journaling probably. I would say five probably five years ago i guess it was yeah. it was kind of like right before i retired so i retired at the end of 2019 mm -hmm. that's when i really started to notice sometimes it'd be three o'clock in the morning and i'd be wide awake staring at the ceiling with all of these things going through my head yeah and i would literally get up whatever was in my head just mm -hmm. jot it down sure and then close the book and then i would end up falling asleep uh, pretty quickly thereafter yeah. and i'd feel you know fresher in the morning and sometimes i'd open up the journal it just be gibberish. I don't even know what I was. I didn't. I don't even know what I was trying to write. But the fact that I was able to get it out of my head and onto paper, yeah. Then I saw a theme starting to occur where I was like, "Wait a minute, these thoughts that I may be having, good, bad, or indifferent, throughout the day, mm -hmm. I'm going to get it out of my head before I put my head on the pillow, and then maybe I'm going to get ahead of the curve. That way, I can get that full six, seven, eight hours of sleep because whatever I was thinking throughout the day, it's now on paper." Now it's an everyday occurrence. There's a, a book actually I have in my backpack right now. It goes everywhere with me. There's certain conversations I'll have with people or a thought that I'll have with somebody uh, or just on my own. Yeah. And I'll write it down because sometimes I want to address it later sure. or I just need to get out of my head. Mm -hmm. And super powerful. Works very well for me. Um, some people might not be the tool of choice, but. Yeah, it's just that that's part of sleep etiquette, right? I mean, uh, I'm still. You know, I still some days I have really good sleeps. Most days not so much, but it, it has to do a lot with yeah, getting that stuff out. Um, so writing is a good outlet uh, for me. 
Um, cause then sometimes you read over it and you're like, that's ridiculous. Uh, of course that's not going to happen, you know, but your brain would convince you at that time while you're lying in bed trying to fall asleep that yeah. this is going to happen. And then you write it, you're like, that's definitely not going to happen. That's so, right. Yeah. And then it's, it's out and, and away you go. Yeah. But uh, yeah, journaling for me was a big one. So uh, kudos to you on that too. But uh, music is a is a big one. Um, so whether that's you know going to shows, you know I can handle a crowd there. Um, playing basketball, uh, officiating a basketball, sorry, I, I can handle that. Going yeah. to Costco, no, I can't. Is that right? It. No. So is it certain crowds that trigger certain things? Or, I think so. Yeah. I think so. I just just I wouldn't say I'm I am a people person. Yeah. Um, but I really like my space too yeah, yeah, fair. yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah i think it's just where potentially with me uh, but you know ball game no problem you know go to see a red black game no problem go yeah. see the blackjacks no problem right um so certain places mm, no i'll stay home it's Interesting. okay yeah, yeah no problem <laughs> you you go all wait in the parking lot or whatever <laughs> type thing <laughs> People, yeah, yeah people. Yeah. I'm just gonna hang out right here. Yeah, you let it. me know how it all yeah. goes. Yeah, I'll be fine. I'll be right here, guarding the car. But so, um, if if you're okay with it, let's let's talk a little bit about where you're at right now. So, mm -hmm. you left the unit three years ago. Yeah. Um, now you're in what's referred to for folks that don't know is is a transition center. So, mm -hmm. uh, maybe just talk a little bit about what is a transition center. How does one fall into that position, or um, you know, um, by choice enter into that position? Yeah, so um, I guess with some of the, you know, injuries I had sustained, um, you know, I wasn't obviously able to perform, uh, you know, in terms of my, you know, in terms of service, however you want to say that. Um, so, i.e., I, this is your, your transition through, um, you know, wherever it is you're, you're coming from to technically your, your retired or your civilian life. Right. Um, amazing bunch of people. Um, again, I had heard... Um, you know, there's some some rumblings out of there. They won't treat you well. You know, they don't do this. They're against you. Uh, blah blah blah. Further from the truth. Uh, okay. If you want something, ask for it. Right. You know, you gotta. They're not gonna offer it to you. Hey, how you feeling today? Right. You know, it's no. Like, you have to ask for it. If you don't right. ask for it, chances are you're not gonna get it. Right. Um, but if you you know, you want something, or you want to do a course, or you need a certain therapy, or whatever the case may be, they're there to help you. Um, so uh, kudos to them versus some people obviously have had some bad experiences and, and that's fine. You're, sure. you're, nothing's uh, perfect. Um, I would say in, 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 you know, in my capacity, um, you know, it's a lot of help from the unit because the unit still really takes care of me. Um, yeah. I, I've been very lucky and fortunate to meet the people that I've met um, and they've helped me get to where I am kind of right now, which is. I'm doing okay right. so not quite baseline yet but we're on we're on our way I, I wouldn't be here three years ago <laughs> go right. talking to you right. about it without probably crying or whatever the case may be right uh, or just missing the unit and wanting to go back yeah uh but you know you have to be willing to want to get good too yeah i agree 100 percent. i don't uh i don't hold on to you know my sickness, however you want to call it, like some people do, it's their identity. Yeah, it is not my identity. Right, you know, at all. I uh, agree. You'll I, only be a victim if you allow yourself to be victimized. I believe that to the core of my being. If you want to get better, you will get better. Now, the timelines to that are going to be different based on the it. individual. Right? Yeah, for sure. And and I'm learning that. And I think that's just the frustrating part with with me. Body healed really good. You know, like you can go to the gym, yep. <laughs> you do your physio supplement you eat good that type stuff shoulders back to 96 we're working on back we're working on you know my hip good to good to go right brain is a little bit more of a you know it, it's not four to six weeks it could be right. a year but they do tell you you can get it back you just right. have to it, it'll happen eventually you just got to be willing to you know do your thing so yeah I, I i carry the course uh it's sure. just it can be frustrating obviously because we want to get things done right away i think yeah. that's just who, just who we are yeah, yeah. It's just we, who we are if we could get it 10 minutes ago then we would yeah. Right? yeah sign me up yeah. um but you know I, I got a really good support cast and i think that's where i'm fortunate um and i've talked about how some people aren't as fortunate they're alone um or all they have is the unit or all they have is you know that yeah they go home they're alone they have no one to talk to so either they talk to a bottle or they talk to, you know, yep. whatever else is they talk about. Um, Cause I've met them, you yep. know, it's I, like, what did, what did you do? What did you do? You yep. know, like, and then once they start seeing you 
putting your hand up and not necessarily a supporter but just you know someone at the end a lot of hands started going up yeah and uh you know it's happening oh yeah it's happening and whether people want to admit it or not because there were some naysayers at the unit some heavy hitters at the unit that said it did not exist in the unit mm -hmm. and sorry to tell you big fella but it's happening yeah you know and uh that hurts too when your dad tells you nothing like that going on here yeah. and we all look at each other and go what well, happened skippy it's happening <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know like, we are yeah. tired my friend <laughs> yeah what you i'm know? feeling in these emotions are real and Dude. you know for someone to say that's not real or you're not mm -hmm. feeling that way it's like who are you to tell me what's going on between my ears you know Correct. it's like but I under, there's a part of me that understands too like you know and i would say empathize with you know yeah you know your, your side of the house where you know it's a lot of money you know because money is it is what it is but money is it can buy you comforts or just you know that you know that safety right sure. um and you don't you don't want to look necessarily bad or take a knee in front of your dudes and and that i get too but i would tell you that you know i've seen a lot of pretty pretty amazing assaulters you know show a lot of more strength than to put their hand up and say like hey man like i'm you know i'm pretty tired or yeah. i just want to go be with my wife now or yeah. my kids or yeah. i did my thing and i'm gonna go do something else now which yeah. is that takes a lot to to, to, sure to leave that you know because you work so hard to get where it is you you yeah. wanted to go and I, I can only imagine it takes yeah. it takes a lot of courage to want to go down that road with preparation for selection yeah. become an assaulter operate at such a high um level mm -hmm. of readiness mm -hmm. there's a lot of courage that goes into that for sure um and in in an element to follow through mm -hmm. where sometimes we along that journey we may question is this the right thing right so being able to persevere push through it to the you know to the end what is the end there really isn't a finish line there really isn't an end state that suggests that now you're here it's funny yeah so you, you you sparked something in my brain there was a there was a point where i don't know where i felt there was this kind of entitlement or um i thought the unit would wait <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. uh it was like oh you know I you know they'll wait for me to get back I, I got you know I went back like to clear out and stuff you yeah. know but I was like who the fuck are all these people yeah. they had no idea who I was you yep. know I was like hey I just really need a couple extra t-shirts and uh, service number and you're yeah, like yeah. what yeah, you don't know I am. <laughs> yeah you don't know I am. <laughs> kind of yeah. yeah and I was just like okay this machine keeps moving oh yeah so if they can keep moving I, I can move yeah I I'll be all right yeah that's a great way to look at it type thing yeah. but there was this there was this I don't know maybe hope or or I, I don't even know what the word is that they would wait yeah. you know i'll wait till he gets better and yeah. then uh whatever you know we'll just pick off <laughs> yeah from wherever we left off let's touch a little bit on you know the the waiting all right so we're you know requesting a little bit of downtime just let me just stay at home for a bit um maybe avoid um some travel for the next uh, three to, to six months or, uh -huh. or whatever it might be so in our heads we're thinking we're going to take this time and we're going to be better for it the unit says okay we'll support you no problem if you need to take an e take an e that's fine we don't you know cast a shade on that however the train keeps moving right oh, yeah. so if you don't mind maybe touch on a little bit of why is maybe a, this is a question actually this is more of a direct question because yeah. i went through it and i want to know if it's similar which i think it is i had a hard time saying no or requesting something different because i knew if i'm out of the stack mm -hmm. that means somebody else has got to pick up my slack sure and that was a hard a hard decision like for folks that maybe don't know i took a, a two-year hiatus from operating at the unit i went to training squadron and the unit supported me to, to for me to to try to achieve my goals in fighting in the ufc that what was my goal and i was very transparent about it and in fact, so much so, I almost left the unit. Mm -hmm. I contemplated taking um, a year or two of leave without pay. Yeah. Financially, that would have been very difficult because you don't get paid well, especially at the level of MMA that I was fighting. Right. It would have been very difficult to do that. The unit said, wait a minute, we can support you. We'll find a position for you within the unit where you're still value-added, um, but you can focus more on, on MMA. Now, 
I knew requesting that I was shooting my career in the foot. I knew that when I come back from this hiatus mm -hmm. of operating, guys are going to look at me differently. This is what was going through my head. Guys are going to look at me differently. Plus now there's more slack for the guys in the teams to pick up, to pick up because mm -hmm. I'm not there doing the job. And I felt, and it's, there's probably some, some accurate facts. Some guys looked at me like, he's just the MMA guy. Other guys were looking at it like, okay, do your thing now. I know you're going to come back. But when I did come back into, and got into the, uh, into the fold again, I didn't feel like it was the same. I didn't, I never felt like it was where I was when I left off. I was pretty confident when I requested that time to focus on MMA because I did have a strong goal to fight in the UFC. I wanted to be the first Canadian Armed Forces soldier to fight in the UFC, and I believed I had it. I believe I had what it took to make it. Just didn't work out. I think we all believed you had it, bud. And I appreciate that. You're welcome. But where I'm going with that is, do you think, in some cases, guys are hesitant to put their hand up and say, I need to take a knee for that simple reason is the tempo is so relenting that they know if they're out of the fight, that means somebody else has got to pick up their slack. Yep. Yep. I would, I would agree with you uh, wholeheartedly. I didn't want to put that necessarily on, uh, you know, the shop number one, right? Cause I mean, like I said, we were supposed to be 13, we were six, you know, now we're down to four and now we're down to three because right. well, you know, buddy's tired or, right. or whatever the case may be. But uh, yeah, for sure. So there was a lot of, um, and yeah, my brain was on overtime, you right. know, just making up stories or catastrophizing, however you want to put it, you know, like you will never see you the same. Uh, you won't be the same. You're, you're missing out on going here or there. Something's going to happen. You won't be there, you know, because, well, I wanted to go fight or I wanted right. to just be with my wife, right. you know, for a minute. Right. Um, so what? Yeah, you wanted to be with your wife, yeah. you know, and if, 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 you know, whatever buddy or, you know, the big boss sees something against that, well then, okay, what yeah. can I do about that? Not much. Nothing. Yeah. So I'll carry on my way and sorry, not sorry. Like I, I'm, I'm better off taking a, a step back and, you know, then like you said, maybe being a, a liability and, you know, in my situation right? Um, and maybe getting someone hurt and then that just causes a whole other can of worms that I didn't want. Sure. But, you know, I had people support me, and I think that was a, a big, part, a little bit easier for me than, and this is just me talking for me, that it would be a lot easier for me in that retrospect than, you know, all the work and hours and time you guys put in to get to your, you know, to hone in in your craft and then, you know, create that cohesiveness within the rack, you know, the stack, sorry, and, yeah. and then want to step away from it. Um, I imagine that might be a, a lot more difficult than, you know, our, you know, my shop per se. Right. Um, but at the same time, trauma is trauma. Yeah. <laughs> you know, trauma is trauma, whether it's your story, my story, we still share a similar feelings. Mm -hmm. So it's like, fuck, this sucks, yeah. but I really want to do this. So, yeah. you know, kudos to you for doing that and kudos to the unit to support you doing that. 100%. You know, same thing they did with, you know, Devin, you know, I mean, yeah. he's doing all right. Yeah. You know, he's doing all right. But I mean, they don't like it oh well yeah so be it you know and I, I i that place i thought was my identity yeah <laughs> i think a lot of this oh, i'll speak for myself i thought it was my identity um and i realized just through you know talking it out and you know plenty of sessions of talking it out yeah um that it, it really isn't no it's not that machine will keep moving whether yep. you know you give them 150 percent for 20 years and you decide to take an hour off it's gonna keep moving yeah um so it, it's okay I believe it is okay, and you know, I I try to um, live by you know, the mantra. You know, being a JTF two assaulter is a choice that I I took. I wanted to be a JTF two assaulter, mm -hmm. but I am not a JTF two assaulter. Yeah. Um, that that's what I chose to do for a living. That's not who I am. No. That's what I did for a living, and I loved every minute of it. Of course. And when I decided to leave, it was on positive terms. Absolutely, nothing negative was driving me out the door. Um, but looking back at it, you know, and sometimes when I'm providing training for military law enforcement guys and they, they often put me into that the mm -hmm. same category and like, well, you guys, you guys at the unit, I'm like, listen, man, A, I don't know what they're doing at the unit now because I've been gone for four years. Um, B, that's not who I am. That's what I did for a living. I just want to be clear. A lot of the experiences, yes, were because of operating at that unit, but from the character perspective, that's not 
not me. That's not me. Like, Agreed. You know, and my license doesn't say Randy Turner, former JTF2 assaulter. Nobody cares. Yeah. Like, that's the way I look at it. I'm like, nobody cares. Life goes on. The train keeps moving. And when we find that path to our current identity sooner, it's yeah. healthier for, for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. I think, yeah, I agree with you uh, on that wholeheartedly. Um, I, I, I thought it was something. It wasn't. Um, like you said, it was it, it was not me. It was something that I did, and I really enjoyed doing, and yeah. uh, I still miss uh, to this day. I think I miss the guys and all that yeah. more than than anything, um, you know, because going through the, the gate there every day, someone waving, it was like being on tour all the time. Yeah, yeah. You don't see that in a base. You wave at someone, and they look at you like you're, you know, yeah. what's the matter with that guy? It's like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> but yeah. that's just how we roll. So, um, yeah. I, I should I should maybe, maybe just clarify. When I say they don't care, that's not true. They, they care, but they... The train is moving at such a rapid tempo. It doesn't have time. Right. It doesn't have yeah. time to no. invest in you, you the individual, no. right? And it can't. And it cannot. No. Nor should we expect it to, right? No. So I, I want to be careful with, you know, it's not that they don't care. They're just, there's so much going on that. I knew exactly what you meant. Yeah. But, like, but yeah, no, it just, it, it has to keep moving. It has to keep Well, moving. I mean, life yeah. in general keeps moving, you know? Yeah. yeah that, that, you know, no one's going to put the, the, their shit on hold because, well, you know, whatever, Lee needs to take a knee or, yep. you know, uh, whoever. The bad guys aren't going to go, oh, okay, time out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we got to right. wait, uh, whatever, two yeah. weeks for everybody to come back from the cut. Hey, happening. Right. And that wouldn't be fair to anybody. What um, was your, so I don't know what the exact numbers are, but it's uh, roughly, um, you know, Five to six supporter assaulter, or excuse me, supporter specialist to to one assaulter. So the numbers are you know quite large in terms of the amount of people it takes to enable assaulters to do their job. Yeah. What was your experience like being part of the supporter specialist environment at the at the unit? What was it, like? What would you like to share with folks that are paying attention um, with with regard to culture? Right. Um... So I mean, I mean, I have a core group of of people that are have left. Um, they're all over the planet right now, right. but we're still in contact. Um, whether it's you know kids or husbands or um, you know jujitsu, whether it's yeah. you know music concerts, uh, you know it is family oriented. Um, as much as people might say it, it's not the the supporter side of the house slash specialists. Um, Someone I hadn't seen in maybe three years would call me and ask them to go help them move. It's just, we'd be there for them. Yeah. Um, you know, that type of stuff. So um, I love that about that place. Um, I think anyone would love that about any part of their life if, yeah, it was, if they had it. Sure. Um, it just happened to be at my work and it was it was great. It just made work a lot easier when you went somewhere. You miss your wife, of course. You know, you miss your hubby, of course. So you could share in that, you know, like like anywhere. But, uh, yeah, um, I don't know. <laughs> so, I don't know. so for somebody that is, you know, maybe interested in becoming a JTF2 assaulter, or maybe that somebody is thinking about getting to the unit, they want to work in the unit, but they're not really sure at what capacity, like based on what you saw, is there an area of specifically to uh, joint task force two where you would see value at it by adding numbers. Like, for an example, if someone's brand new to the military, they want to work, you know, amongst the, the best of the best, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. um, what would you suggest to them? Like, would you suggest, you know, apply as a supporter, see how it goes, and then maybe think about trying out as a, an assaulter if that's what they want to do? Yeah, um, I know, I know, I, I don't know if they, they frown on that. <laughs> I know sometimes I don't want you coming in your first year going, oh, I'm going to go selection. Right. And it's like, okay, well, we just trained you. Right. You know, it took us, like, even on the four, like, on my first four years, it takes you about two years to get, you know, the run of the house or the run of the, how things work, you right. know, because we, you know, you guys are, are we use some different uh, items um, yep. than the, the conventional forces. A lot of times those items end up going over to the conventional forces because, you know, we're the we're the testing ground for that stuff. Right. So we have to learn outside that box too. So, um, but I mean, yeah, I would, uh, what I, 
what I wanted to bring to the table when I went in, I, I would say number one is, with, with mine was humility more than anything. I mean, if you don't know something, don't don't, don't BS the guys, right. you know? A lot of times they're asking you questions sometimes that they know, it's rhetorical, right. they're just testing you. And there is that, there, there are tests sometimes, and of course they are, they, you need to know that they can trust you. That's right. You know, if you're packing his bag or you're packing his gear and they can't trust you on a basic, you know, question of, you definitely don't know the answer. Yeah. And you don't say, I don't know, give me a second, I'll find it out for you. Yeah. Saving that versus saying, oh, blah, 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 make up something, then they're like, mm, you're done already. Yeah. And enjoy your four years and then... Totally. See ya. <laughs> yeah. You're going to lose credibility very quickly. If you don't know something, it's okay to say you it's don't okay know. It's okay to say no. And Not all the time, but you know, I mean, if it's if it's genuinely something, you're like, hmm, I don't know the spec of that, or I don't know the feet per second, or I don't know the, you know, et cetera, sure. whatever it is. Um, give me a minute, you yeah. know, give me 10. I'll be right back. Yeah, I'll go in the pubs. Yeah, yeah, and I'll be right back. And then chances are you'll always remember that because it's kind of, a lot of times it's just a curveball. It's something that you haven't really experienced before. Mm -hmm. And you're like, hmm, that's a good question. Um, or you go look at it together. A lot of times we go look at it together. And to me, that was the group I was with. That, that to me made them a little different than the other ones. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, well, you go find that. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. you mentioned something there. I'd be interested to know what your opinion is. Talk about trust. Trust is is everything. Without trust, there's no foundation to build anything on. Yeah. But how does one garnish trust, in your opinion? Like I have my theory on. You know, like I'll be completely transparent. I don't trust easily. I have uh, I have trust issues. I have I have control issues that I'm trying to combat sure. against every day. And trust is a big one. Where. I don't just hand it out, it's got to be earned, but I have a criteria that needs to be met in order for me to garnish that trust with an individual. Yep. When we think about trust and especially the, the importance of what the unit stands for, what it represents and, and what it's mandated to do, in your opinion, how does one earn the trust of, of somebody that they're working with? They don't know you from a hole in the wall. How do you, how do you work towards garnishing that trust with somebody? Uh, so. I think your openness, number I like, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty open. Um, so I'm, I'm open to criticism. I'm open to, I guess it's learning. I always see it as, as learning. So as long as you're, you're, you're open and earning to learning, not like, you know, my way, highway type stuff, it just, it's not going to work for you. Um, but being open, uh, you know, being humble is another, as another one, um, in my opinion, yeah. um, you know, not being a know-it-all, not thinking your job is better than somebody else's, um, not thinking that, you know, packing it this way versus that way is any better than, you know, if that's the way the individual wants it packed, that's the way they want it packed. And it's usually for a reason. Because there were some times where I was like, I didn't want that. Like, why does that even, that doesn't even make sense. And then I asked, why do you want that like that? Well, A, B, C. Okay, I, I get it now versus right. not even asking the question. So right. a lot of the guys were open to that. It was just like, why the fuck are you doing it? Why are you doing that? Right. You know, and they're like, well, because we got this length or we want this length and this length. All right. Makes sense. To me, you're wasting. Right, right. You weren't wasting. Now, now I understand. So I can pass that down to... Right. You know the, the boys and they go well, this is this is why they do that mm -hmm. sometimes on the outside like, i don't have a comprehension of what it is you're going in to do or or, or why you're setting up your rig a certain way or mm -hmm. why you want your ammo packed this way that way why you want it on the left not the right now, so now i get it asking those questions to fully understand the why is important but then being humble enough to at least try to conceptualize the why right and and to you know a lot of people get starstruck, right? <laughs> and not that I was not starstruck. I, I respect, you know, you know, fully respect what you guys did. But to ask the question sometimes is a big deal, you right. know. So having those interpersonal skills to like say, you know, just go up to someone and talk, or you know, yeah. the guys are in a group, nobody wants to interject. Like, hey, can I talk to you for a minute? Type thing. Sure. We're doing this. We're doing this. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That type stuff. Um, but yeah, um, you know, the guys just know that when. You know, Lee was coming, or whatever the case may be. Um, so I'll give you a little trick here, if ever you want to get in. This is kind of how I, I you know, I, I did my thing. Yeah. So 
we're going to shoot somewhere, whatever the case may be. It's been planned for months, you know. They, they do their TSRs. I mean, it's not my job to tell you what you should bring and what you shouldn't bring. Right. However, however, we, we know there's a fire index wherever we're going to go and maybe shoot tracer rounds. So even though they didn't ask for it, if you have that in your truck when the time comes, and it's like, oh, man, we didn't, we didn't TSR, you know, no tracer. Right. I got you. Right, right, right. That is a, that's a big one. Mm -hmm. So foreshadowing or uh, we like, you know, in the official world, we call it a pre preventative officiating. <laughs> <laughs> preventative officiating? Yeah. <laughs> so forecasting, just like, okay, we're going here or it's going to be boggy, you know, type thing. You know, sometimes the guys mortar stuff, you know, into the fucking mud. I yeah. gotta hit a hard surface, guys. It's not the mud. Cause right. Now I gotta go into the mud, yeah. <laughs> and I gotta bip that. Right. But uh, that type of stuff. Okay. Um, so when you have it, even though they didn't ask for it, sometimes mm -hmm. you're a rock star, right. and uh, that'll win you some some points. Sure. You know. I mean, fuck yeah, did I forget some things sometimes? Of course. We're yep. Human. Absolutely. It's like, Lee, why don't you bring the grenades? It was like, well, you didn't put them on a TSR? Yeah, but you always bring the grenades. I forgot this time. <laughs> it was like, sorry, man, yeah. I, I forgot. Yeah. Noted, I got you. Yeah. That type stuff, so that, you know, being able to take the banter too sometimes, not taking it personal. It's yeah. not personal at, at all, so please don't ever think it's personal. That's sometimes right. it is, you know, there's a time and place where it's like, get your head out of your butt, yeah. you know, like, move on, it's over, and we're going this way. It's like, cool, no problem. You forgot it, you forgot it, no big deal. The guys adapt and they do their thing. And I think, uh, you know, a lot of that has to do with the the approach, right? Yeah. The, the human side of yeah. the approach, right? Yeah. Like if someone's taking a, a stab at you, yeah. you, you can usually tell when it's personal or vindictive, whether it's just like, hey, I'm sure. just, just taking a rise of the situation. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. We have guys at the unit we talked about prior to starting this that are, are, are quite miserable. Uh, yeah. <laughs> However, <laughs> it's all good, whatever, man. Yeah. No, no, no big deal. Yeah, no, no big deal. You know, there's a lot to be said about the approach and how one, um, you know, builds relationships with other people, and it. you know, it's just being around people. You know, being around people, being a personable guy, um, you know, or our person, I should say. Yeah. Um, you know, just knowing that, you know, for bringing that guy along, and number one, you'll probably bring, you know, some calmness to this. Like, even if, even if, you know, just be calm. You could be dumps your fire inside you're, sure. you're on fire sure. and you're just like ah, yeah, everything's good <laughs> go do your thing you're like my god what is happening but uh yeah just just be a nice you know calm person you know i mean treat the guys and you know the way you know they they want to be and be the best that you can for them at the end of the day because they're doing a a really important job. They're away from their family too. That's you right. Know, just yeah. like I am. Human being, just like everybody else. Just like right? I am. You yeah. know, embrace the you know proverbial suck and you know do your yeah. thing. But uh, back to trust. I think that's what it is. Is just being a personable person, being open, um, humble, good calms, um, just being open to suggestion. Um, you know, never saying no. And it's not necessarily not saying no. But like, hey, okay, well, you can't do that, but how about maybe A, B, C? Give sure. them an option. Don't just say no. Right, right. You know, because there's no thought in that. It's like, well, what do you mean no? Yeah. It's like, well, you know, sorry, we don't have Moabs. Yeah, no yeah, is yeah, the yeah. answer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we don't yeah, have that. Yeah. However, we have yeah. this, you know. Okay, we'll go, with, we'll go with C. Yeah, I like it. Uh, it's funny. Often, uh, you know, before you get to the 10th yes, you're going to face nine no's. And the way I look at it, when somebody, if I requesting something that somebody says no i look at it internally like all right now this is because I, I like scrapping i'm like okay now this is going to be this is where the negotiations begin i love like, negotiations yeah you said no i'm gonna i'm gonna do everything i can to convince you to say yes of course it you know yeah it makes sense right yeah uh, but yeah it's fun but some, um, so, it's, yeah, so, so sometimes what we'll do to uh how can i how can i put this without giving shop secrets away uh <laughs> Someone will want something specific. Right. And it's like, okay, cool. Um, so in order to do that, yes. or if you want this, we have to do A, B, C, and D. Right. So I'm gonna need your help doing C and D. Ooh, that's gonna take like six months. Yep, but I need your help and we'll get it done. Ooh, I'm not ready to do that yet. Okay, perfect. Get okay. back to me okay. when you're ready yeah. and we'll do it. We can make it happen. It's just, this is what we, we gotta do. Fair. Whether you're willing to, yep. You know, you got to write the letter. I can't write the letter for you because it's conflict of, right. you need to tell me why you need that capability. Right. The army is going to tell you, well, we already have this capability, so why do you need that one? Right. You got to justify that. And we can justify that together. However, we got to do it together. Right. You got to tell me why. Yep. And when you're ready to do it, 
it'll happen. Yeah. It's just gonna take some time. Some time. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just I got you. <laughs> See you in eight months. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Unfortunately, right. it doesn't. Although sometimes there are times you really wish it did. Right. Um, or we just had a credit card where we could just go sure. buy it for you guys and give it to you. Um, unfortunately, there's paper and legalities and sure. words and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's our job. It's not necessarily to know it all because you can't. It's impossible. Yeah. But, you know, to be able to maybe bring someone down and just say, hey, like we can do it. However, this is what's going to take us to do that. Sure. And if you're on board with me, then we'll do it. And we have done it. Yeah. Um, yeah. we did it. Um, Multiple cases. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like some insane feats in a, a relatively short amount of time. And I would almost, I would almost challenge any of the units out there that there's no way they did that. Yeah. No way. No way. We pulled some rabbits out of hats <laughs> quite a few times for the guys and they deserve it. It's just, we wish sometimes it was easier. Yeah. It's like there's no way we want to say no to you know, whatever, Randy or yeah. whatever. There's no way. We don't want to. Don't ever think we do. Sure. Sometimes we're like, oh, for the love of God, yeah, this is going to take, okay. like, this is going to take two years. Yeah. Like, okay, but let, let's, let's do it, yeah. you know, and say we were the ones that did it. Yeah. So, you know, with your, put your name on that. So, yeah, I think that's just being open, you know, in terms of trustworthy, being open, knowing the guys, learning their, uh, you know, patterns of what it is they like. I like their things packed, all, all that stuff. Sure, yeah. It's just, it's important. Little yeah. details, they tell you the same in officiating. It's the little things that we notice. It's not yeah. the balls and strikes. Everyone can do that. Right. But it's those little things that go, I like the way he operates. Yeah. Or he does his thing. Yeah. You know, like we just, Ask questions. we don't have to worry about it. All I have to worry about is showing up on X. Perfect. It was, unpa it was packed just the way I wanted it packed. Yeah. And I can grab, like there's a whole method to the madness, even though it may seem like really you want yeah. it on the left side and you want 10 here and you want yeah it makes sense i, I love it i love the details it uh, makes yeah. sense yeah uh, you know, but you have details. to you, yeah. you ask but that's the type of information and knowledge you pass down to to you guys so they right. can pass that down and then it's just did anybody ever ask them why we do it this way mm -hmm. no it's like well what okay, I'll, I'll be right back yeah. <laughs> you know well this is why and everyone's yeah. like oh it's, like, mm. it's, right it's just easier for them once they get there they get off the bird you know, c c c the way they go, mm -hmm. and versus like, oh, where is it? Yeah. Oh, here's your map. It's right here. Yeah, and yeah. It's done the same way every time. You know, right. type thing. So when things aren't done that way, they're like, Ugh. yeah, Ugh. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's irritating, and I get it. But that's what'll put you in a different s stratosphere. Right. Um, it's like, yeah, that guy's pretty good, but mm, details. Yeah. I like that. So they like that. That's yeah, true. Very cool. I'm a detail guy. Yeah, I, me too, man. I like it. To, uh, to, a, to a fault. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I'd much rather Correct. have too, too much detail and not enough and then be and left guessing, it. right? I agree yeah. with you. Yeah. Right. But that, that's the way we, we roll. That's yeah. the way I, I roll. Our entire shop right now, like I haven't been there, like I know who's there. They're like that. They're really good people. And they'll they'll be there for a while. They're 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 really really good, but a lot better than I I was. So and I think that's the way it's supposed to be, and I yeah. think that's the way my predecessors wanted it. Um, yeah. and and I think they attained that. Yeah, and, and that's uh, one good thing about the unit for sure. Like each year, it just gets more and more polished, a little bit better. The product at the end gets a little bit better. The people that that leave and you know others come in it just it just gets better and smoother and, and more efficient i think anyway i i think so too uh, i'm kind of at detached now and i the guys know that when we get together or go to the movies i don't want to talk about it because yeah. I've, I've voiced it so we don't um but i just ask them how they're doing you know you're busy yeah okay cool that's it and yeah. we're on to the off to the movies i don't yeah, it's your show now it has nothing to do with me anymore um and then i understand that it's it's definitely changed over three years there's no no way it hasn't For sure. yeah, exactly. there's no way it hasn't um new chain of command new everything they're doing you know things change yeah i think they're evolving so so speaking of change, we're coming up just over an hour, I guess now. Um, you know, I appreciate you taking the time. Um, I'll we'll, talk with we'll, you all day, uh, Randy. We'll, 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 we'll wrap it up here. <laughs> but before we do, um, is there a piece of advice that you would give your 37-year-old self? So just getting into the military, looking back at everything that you've accomplished to this point, which is a lot, you should be proud, and I hope you are. Uh, what advice would you give you know, a 37-year-old version of yourself? Let me ponder that. That's a really good one. 
This is a really good question. Um, I guess if I think about myself talking to my boy, which is the way I'm gonna kind of mm -hmm. maybe try to do this. Um, like I always went in with an open mind. I really wanted to be, you know, this might be a long way around to the answer, but a cop more than anything. Mm -hmm. Keep your, you know, just because one door closed um, doesn't necessarily mean that that journey was over. Right. Another one opened, um, and I would tell you, like, if you really wanted something to commit to it, just because you commit to something and it doesn't come to fruition, it doesn't mean it was done for nothing, mm. um, you know. It, it was basically my path to, to, to you guys at the end of the day, and it became a dream job. It was better than uh, OPS mm. uh, to me at the end of the day. Um, and that's their loss, not mine. Right. Um, you know, because I've worked with them, and they're like, hey, would you like, no, you had your chance. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm done. Yeah. But. If I was to give advice, I would just say, you know, give it, like I did, I would just say, give it, you know, your, your full attention, give it everything you've got, because it's important, mm -hmm. you know, listen to the things you're, I took everything to heart that the drill instructors, you know, whether it was, you know, Sergeant Canning, I still remember them, because they were, they were, it was just like, we're not making a bed, we're making you pay attention to details. Mm -hmm. Don't see it as making a bed. So they were changing my mind, and I was a civvy going, oh, why am I making my bed? So yeah. this is why, you know? So, and then passing that knowledge down. Don't hoard that. Um, mm. I think that's really why our shop was so cohesive, is that nobody hoarded anything. So if you get that little tidbit of information or something that is valuable to, you know, making the mission or the X a success or, you know, making someone on the other end look good, um, then do it mm. and share it. Because um, if you don't, then you're not really helping yourself any bit. You're not helping anything out. I mean, you know, you're not helping the unit. You're not helping yourself. You're not helping anything out. So, you know, you learn something, share it, I think would be uh, a, a big one. Um, the other one would be just give it all you got. You know, I mean, you owe it to yourself more than anything. You know, they've selected you because you don't really apply for this job. Right. Uh, they select you, and they selected you for a reason. So don't think you don't belong there. Right. Um, you do. Um, now it's time for you to show them why. Yeah. Um, especially coming in as you know a, a no hook. You know, granted, I had life experience. I, I, I you know, I was thirty six, thirty seven. Sure. Uh, Jeff, my you know, my FTP was, you know, he had experience um, and we, 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 we fed off each other. We did really well together, but we shared info. We backed each other, supported each other, and we made it through and he's actually back there now running the shop. Amazing. As a no, you know what I'm saying? As, yeah. a, as a three who people were really like, these guys shouldn't be here. Sure. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah, you know every, we had every right to be there. Absolutely. Um, and those that took those people that took a chance on us, because they did. You know, one of them just took over the command of Kansov. I owe him a lot. He probably doesn't know me from my name on a piece of paper, and I think I've met him once. But yeah. I'm a product of him believing in. Yeah me that's amazing yeah he took a chance and he and certainly did yeah it's great and uh yeah i thank him for that because he you know he gave my family a lot uh, so again uh mr b <laughs> <laughs> uh thank you you know um but uh, yeah just you owe it to yourself and you owe it to you know the unit um that if you do want to go there that it, it demands your your all not necessarily your all all but give it a fair shot yeah you know so it's great advice you know be committed you yeah. know follow it through you never know what's around that corner you never know what's behind that door but you no. know give it a shot and, and try be all in try yeah just yeah. try let's, let's try yeah yeah they be give it a shot and uh you know if it pays off great if it doesn't try something different you know there's nothing wrong with you know failing for say uh, yeah. we all fail yeah but, um, you know, I was told I couldn't, I was told I wouldn't, uh, I was told a lot of things from some people and prove them wrong. Yeah. Believe in yourself. Love it. 
<laughs> the so old cliche please. believe yeah. in yourself it's true because if you don't then you're already starting yeah starting a deficit yeah yeah you know Right on, Lee. I appreciate it. It's great advice and uh, great chatting with you. Oh, and as anytime, always. Anytime, buddy. Yeah, thanks anytime. for making the time, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, yeah, brother. We'll do it again in the future. Oh, please. Anytime. Cheers. It was a thanks, blast. Bro.